This will be my last video of 2023. 2023 has definitely been one of the most fulfilling years I've had. And so in today's video, I want to reflect on some of the things that I was able to accomplish throughout the year, the opportunities I've had, as well as talk about some of the fun things that photography and content creation has allowed me to do. Starting off in January 2023, the beginning of the year, we started this YouTube channel with roughly 2,500 subscribers. I remember in January being at my friend's house and we were talking about YouTube and what my goal with YouTube was. And I told him by the end of the year, I can guarantee you I will have 10,000 subscribers. This was a goal that I had set myself for in January. And this is what I told him, not knowing if I hit it or not, but I know that if I put this on my list of goals for this year, that I would do everything in my power to try making that happen. So I would wake up every day, film videos, edit my videos, try staying consistent with my content, and that was my strategy to try getting to 10,000 by the end of the year. Create better videos and consistently deliver to you guys. That was the goal from the very beginning, and that's what I will continue to do. Now, January was also the month that I decided to quit my job and go full-time in photography and content creation. Now, I wasn't working a professional nine to five job. I was working three days a week at a restaurant, and I did that so that I can have the other four days left in the week to focus on booking photo shoots and creating content. At the time, I also needed those three days a week to help me afford my condo living in downtown Toronto. As I started doing more photo shoots in 2022, leading up to January of 2023, I realized, do I really need these extra three days a week to be able to afford it or am I good? And so I wrote a pretty lengthy email to my boss about why I didn't enjoy working there and I quit, not knowing how the rest of the year would pan out. Now February rolls around and I actually moved out of the condo, not because I couldn't afford it because I quit my job, but because it was very small. I was already living there for two years. There wasn't much windows, so we didn't get much sunlight. And I was honestly getting pretty depressed living there. I actually moved out of the city. My business is still based there, but I moved to a smaller town to focus on creating content and just having a better day-to-day -day life. So I built out this YouTube studio. It's still not done yet. I actually filmed the entire process when I was painting it and decorating it and I have yet to post that video. So maybe when it's completely done because I'm not all satisfied with it, when it's done, maybe I'll make a video on it. In April, I went on a solo trip to Spain to see Madrid and see Barcelona and that was by far one of my favorite places I've ever been. This was the first time I went on a trip and a couple days into it, after lugging around all my camera gear, I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. And I actually wanted this trip to feel like I was actually on vacation and I was enjoying it and I didn't have to document it everywhere I go. And after two days for the rest of the trip, I didn't bother lugging around all of my camera gear and I thought I was going to regret it when I got home that I didn't have any photos or videos to look back on. I didn't and I'm glad that I lived in the moment, especially for a place like Spain where I've always wanted to go. In May, I hit a big goal of mine. 100,000 of you followed me on Instagram because of my photography tips. As someone who began creating content all the way back to 2019 on TikTok for the sake of helping beginner photographers and so that other photographers can learn with me things that I learned and as I was developing as a photographer, I'm glad you guys found value in it and I'm so glad that after doing it for four or five years that it's all starting to pay off. In June and July, my friends Anthony, Taha, Will, Rich, and I all decided that we should get out more and do more activities and more photography stuff outside of what we usually do. So we went up north about four plus hours from Toronto up to Bruce Peninsula and then Manitoulin Island. And it was a great little getaway and a break for everyone but it was also an opportunity for me and for the others to try a different type or style of photography. Now also in this month, I received an email that I have dreamed of getting ever since I started in photography, and that was asking if I wanted to be a Sigma ambassador. 
when I received this email, that was a sign that everything that I was doing was actually working, that I was on the right track to something. Ever since I started in photography, I always use Sigma lenses because of their amazing quality and sharpness, but also because of their affordability. And so when Sigma reached out to me, it was like a blessing. It just fit because I had already talked so highly about these lenses ever since I started in photography. Now probably one of the most fulfilling things I've done all year was to host my own photography event. In July, I hosted my own photography event called Portraits and Chill, and it was an event where I can give back to you guys. I can give back to my followers and subscribers, those who have been watching my videos since day one. An event, whether or not you're a beginner photographer or a professional photographer, you were able to shoot with the five models that I had there and shoot in an amazing studio for four hours, but also be able to use those photos that you take at the event to build your portfolio. Seeing over 60 of you attend my event was so amazing and it felt so good. In August, thanks to my friend Rob, I posted this video where we had the opportunity to photograph and drive over $1 million in exotic cars. And Rob is about to rip it. Holy, holy shit. Hold on. I am a huge car guy and I've always dreamed of owning a Ferrari or at the least driving a Ferrari. So having the opportunity to photograph these super expensive exotic cars, but also drive them on a six hour experience was just unreal. Especially with a good group of people, with my friend Rob, John, Chris, and his dad, we all had a really good time. Near the end of August, I set up a portrait photo shoot with my friend Kat at Toronto CNE, and I was able to snag my favorite portrait of the year. The lighting, the colors, everything about this photo, I just love so much. In September, Sigma hosted their Creative Spaces event, and I had the opportunity to speak at it. We're connecting creators together, giving them the opportunity to test gear in different like segments, uh, giving you the opportunity to speak to them as well about all the portrait sessions you're going to be doing and just having a good time networking with a bunch of cool people around the Hamilton area. Even though I was extremely nervous to public speak in front of a lot of people, I enjoyed it a lot. I was able to share my story, share how I shoot portraits, but also present some giveaways for those of you who were there. In October, I launched my first ever portrait preset pack. This is a preset pack that you guys have been waiting for ever since I made the switch from street photography to portrait photography. You guys have been waiting for me to release a pack like this. My ethereal preset pack is by far one of the best preset packs I've made to this date. And that's because they're so versatile to work on every photo for every camera brand. And that's because they don't adjust your exposure adjustments. They're only your color adjustments. So when you see these presets, your highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, exposure, contrast, none of this has been changed. The majority of the portraits that you've seen on my YouTube videos, my Instagram, those were all edited with my ethereal preset pack. So if you guys are interested and you wanna support the channel, those will be linked down in the description. Now in October, we all got together and booked a trip to Quebec for eight days to capture the fall colors. I've never been to Quebec, that was my first time, and I actually really enjoyed it. We had a really fun time. It was nice for everyone to get away and go somewhere else where we haven't taken photos before. I actually filmed an entire Digicam video or Digicam battle there, which I haven't posted yet, so that will go out sometime in the new year. October was also the month where I hit my big goal that I've wanted to hit, the goal that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and that was hitting 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. I honestly didn't think that it would come this soon. Like I said, I thought it was gonna happen at the end of the year, but we absolutely blew past it. So all I can say is thank you. Thank you for showing your support. Thank you for watching my videos, clicking that like button, hitting that subscribe button, leaving comments, all of that stuff helps the channel grow. Thank you for sharing my videos and thank you for showing your support. 
In November, I was booked for a really, really cool photo shoot for a diamond brand and one of my friends who is partnering up with this diamond company. It was a super cool concept. They had a full mood board planned out and basically what they wanted was a look that I've done in the past, which is my flash film look that I've actually posted a video on how to do earlier in the year. At the end of November or the beginning of this month, my friend Anthony, Brandon or Current Spaces and his brother-in-law and I booked a trip to Iceland for four days. Iceland has always been one of those places that I've dreamed of visiting and what a beautiful place it was. It truly felt like you were on a whole different other planet. While we were there, we experienced some crazy weather I've never experienced anywhere else, but we've also got to see some of the most amazing landscapes I've never seen anywhere else. We also got really lucky on our second day being able to capture the Northern Lights dancing over Mount Vesterhorn, something I will never see again. We had a lot of fun and I definitely got some of my favorite photos I've ever taken. So if you've never been to Iceland, go. Just as we got back from Iceland, I had the opportunity to demo Sigma's newest 70-200 and talk about my experience using it in Iceland. And three days after Iceland, the next day after this Sigma demo, Anthony and I were on a plane heading to the Canon event at the Scope Art Show in Miami. I got to meet some amazing creators at this event like Irene Rudnick, Keegan Evans, Anita Sadowska, Michael Sasser, Carter PCs, and even Sam Newton. And there were so many more that I wish I introduced myself to like Marina Williams, David Saw, and so many more. During our weekend in Miami, I also met up with my friend Rhea to do a portrait photo shoot. I wasn't gonna leave Miami without doing a photo shoot there. So there will be a video coming out next year, probably the first week or second week of the new year. And it'll be the behind the scenes of my portrait photo shoot with Rhea in Miami. Throughout the year, I've taken some amazing photos, I've made some amazing content, I've met some amazing people, and worked with some great brands. I also hit and smashed some of those goals that I set for myself at the beginning of the year. If you were to ask me if I knew that my year was gonna be like this and have all these opportunities, I would tell you no, but that's the great thing about setting goals for yourself. When you set goals for yourself, you do everything in your power to make those goals happen. And in that process of making these goals happen, doors and opportunities open for you. I don't know about you, but I've already started to write down all of my goals for next year with a plan of how I'm gonna make those goals a reality. And with that being said, Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for watching. There's gonna be a lot of awesome content coming out in the next year. Happy holidays and I'll see you in 2024.